Good morning friends, welcome back to our channel Engineer Low Civil. So today we are going to learn the software Revit architecture. You can see the icon, the symbol of Revit architecture application on the desktop screen. So what is Revit? Revit is also known as the BIM, that is Building Information Modeling. BIM is an intelligent model based process that provides insight for creating and managing building and infrastructure projects faster, more economically, and with less environmental impact. The Autodex Revit software includes a comprehensive portfolio of solutions for design, visualization, simulation, and collaboration that uses the rich information in the intelligent model to inform better decision making and break down the barriers to better business. So today we are going to learn BIM or Revit software in details. So let's begin with today's class. Let's open the software. So after taking some process time, we have downloaded the software from revitautodex.com and here is the software and after opening the software, the screen displays like this. There are three types of Revit files. The Revit uses the three types of file that is project file, template file and family files, each file extensions. So let me tell about the project file. Uh, it is the actual building models created. Uh, it has point .rvt extension. Means after saving the file, if your file name saved is xyz, uh, the file will show like xyz.rvt. Like, uh, I'll tell you the another example, like we take the Word document. But the file xyz name saved shows the xyz.doc. And in AutoCAD uh, file, it shows .dwg. There are different extensions for different softwares. For Revit project file, it's .rvt. For Revit family files, it's .rfa. And for template files, it's rte and rft extensions. So further, we are moving to family files. These are used to create the objects such as doors, windows, annotations, symbols, title box uh, that are loaded in the uh, project files. And we could also make them. We could also import them. There are many ways. We'll move forward and I'll teach you that. Third is the template files. These are used to create projects and family files. Uh, so let's start with the project. Uh, first, tell me, uh, let me tell you what is project. A project is that provides essential information about building model, um, such as size and location of the components, materials used, annotations, and so on. Mm, the display settings in the project file define the appearance of the model in project views based on the requirements. Uh, one can customize the default settings of the project. Uh, moving forward to the project templates. Mm, there are many default project units and settings uh, to start a project to in, uh, initial conditions with uh, building levels and standard views and system families like wall, flows, others, blah, blah, blah. We'll turn in for further classes. So, Let's start. Uh, the interface open shows you different commands. Like here is the file command, the architecture command, structure command, steel, systems, insert, innovate, and analyze, massive side, mm, many more. So we can open a project as well as we can create a project. Also, we can open families or we can create a family. So let's start a project. We will go to the new option, okay? So new, and then we'll set a name, or we can browse it if you want to open it, then create a new project, and then okay. It will ask two systems, empirical and metric. We'll select metric, then the main design page will open. It will take time, some time. Look at the bottom, it's processing, it's 59% done. So here we come, our primary user interface has been open. So here's the look of Revit architecture. So let me tell you different things. First of all, this is application, this is application menu. Uh, this provides access to common file actions such as new, open, save, it also allows to the manage files using advanced tools such as export and publish. So let's move forward to this. The whole row 
uh, at the, the whole top row. It is called a quick access toolbar. Uh, the quick access toolbar contains a set of default tools. Uh, you can customize this toolbar to display the tools that you use most often. Okay, so the third uh, is this one the name, the project name given, uh, that is the title bar. It displays the current project name, okay? So moving forward to the next, it is the info center. These four or five icons are the info center. Uh, it is used in several Autodex pro uh, products like AutoCAD and you have seen it there also. It consists of a set of tools on the right side and which you can enable to access many products related information sources. Mm, it's the sign in button for AutoCAD 360 and yeah. This is a ribbon. It contains expand panels, dialog launcher, and ribbon tabs, and many more. Okay, so moving forward to these areas, uh, you can modify any object. You can create a wall, you can create a door, you can insert a door, you can insert uh, windows, you can insert components like furniture, lightings, and many more. You can even insert columns, architectural columns, structural columns, and you can insert roof, ceiling, floor, and uh, curtain balls, railings, ramps, stairs, and you can also add text. You can uh, give a particular room area. You can add area. Um, you can show. Uh, you can divide the wall by face, by shaft, and even you can set different levels, grids, sets. These are the architecture menu. Moving further to the structural menu, um, here you have the structural elements of the building like beam, walls, columns, floor which contains reinforcements, truss, braces, beam systems, connections, uh, footings like isolated footing, wall footing, slab footing and rebars and uh, different areas, path, uh, fabric area. If you go and just uh, do not press the button, just move the cursor over there, you will get the detailed information of each footings. Uh, it will show if your net is connected. Okay, so you will add different structural components um, like bowls and many more. So here also grids and different level sets will teach further. Uh, these are the steel. Uh, if you have done in the civil engineering in seventh or sixth or seventh semester, you have learned uh, steel structure. So you can add plates, you can add bolts, you can add welds, you can cut the corner, you can cope the squid, you can uh, shorten it. You can contour cut and many more different things like melter and many more. Okay, so moving further, further to the systems, they have various systems like fabrication part or the mechanical equipment or pipe, pipelines, plumbing, shrinker, electrical, model, many more. Further to insert, if you want to insert something like a AutoCAD file or a PDF or anything, if you have AutoCAD file and you have to generate a Revit project on it, you have to move the 2D file to a 3D, then you can use this. If you can, uh, if you if you have an image and you have to move it, then you can do this. You can insert, you can insert a load of family. Moving forward to annotate, and there are different, uh, um, annotate means you give a dimension. Uh, how much the length of the wall it is? So while using align or linear, you can specify the length of the wall. So you can show the spot elevation, spot coordinates, detail line, detail regions, revision, detail groups. You can show text. You can check the spelling, find or replace anything. Or you can even tag something. You can tag a column or a beam with a symbol or anything else. Okay. So moving forward to analyze. In analyze, you can, um, it is mean the analyze column mainly used in Revit structural. So that's not in our syllabus now. So in Revit structure, it's used to analyze the loads, the boundary conditions, the load cases details, the load combinations. Like uh, you have the combination with 1.5 dead load and live load or uh, 1.8 um, dead load and wind load. These are the combinations. It analyzes this and you can adjust, reset or constitute supports. You can add space, space separator and different zones. It has different features and uh, we'll learn in Revit structural in next class. Okay, so these are the massing in site. Uh, you have seen a site plan in AutoCAD. In the site plan, it's like uh, the boundary walls in between the plot size. Okay, so what's about uh, what about outer area of boundary wall? If you want to add the topo surface, if you want to add trees, grasses, uh, mountains, so using massing in sites. Okay, you can use this component to add the topography, topo surface to the project. Okay, let's move forward to the collaborate and then view. If you want to view the 3D view, you want to view the section, you want to view the plans, elevation, any view. If you want to view all that in a sheet, if you want to view the graphics, if you want to make the uh, wall transparent, if you want to make the slab or floor transparent, you can use this structure. Okay, then moving forward to manage. Uh, this manage is used for materials manage. What is the color of material? What is the uh, shape of material? What is the uh, component used in that material? You have you, you are using iron, copper, nickel or nickel or anything. These are the manage shows. Uh, then add-ins. In add-ins, 
you can manage, you can convert a Revit file to different files and in modify, you can edit these means you can copy you can trim you can move you can rotate you can join you can extend you can uh, fillet you can array scale and many more options are there you can unpin it pin it or delete it you can even scale it you can measure it many more options are there in the modify tool so let's start with the architecture today i'm just going to teach you the basics so in our basics we are civil engineers we have to make a plan of building what type of building one rk 1 BHK, 2 BHK, 3 BHK, or a, uh, a bungalow, or a flat system. In a flat scheme, it's very easy. You have to just design the parking, first floor, and just need to copy the first floor to all the floors. It's far, far simple. Or you have to design a bungalow, where you have different ground floor plan, different first floor plan, different second floor plan, and uh, whatever the plans you may like to. Okay, so let us start. First of all, we'll go to grid. What is grid? We will assign some lines from which we need to make a plan the uh, the primary lines on which the walls will run okay um, suppose i make a line like this again after a particular distance i'm taking a random line that is 800 meter if i take after some 1200 meter then another line after this much i can uh, take measurement with this or uh, like in next class, I will teach you how to make plans. In that, we will use grids in a very specific way. In this class, I'm just teaching you how to randomly make a plan in just shortcut ways. So, we had made a grid. Okay, now we will go to elevation. The elevation part. In this, yes, from here, we have dragged this menu, you know, the project browser, to the right side. Okay, now we are in level 1. Now we'll move to the elevation. Okay. We will delete this level one. We will move to the elevation part. Here, the elevations are too long. We need to modify this elevation. We'll go to levels. With the help of levels, we'll select on how much distance the floor height will be. Let us assume a distance of 3.1 meter. Okay. So, I had made a floor height of 3.1 meter. Now, I want... Uh, now I will go to the level 1. After making a floor height, the levels has been added, like level 2. Now this is a level 1, the ground floor plan. We will select a wall. The wall will go through center to center. Here. Uh, first we will take a boundary wall. Okay. So this is our boundary wall of our house. Now we will make rooms and kitchen. Okay. Suppose uh, we have to make walls, right? These walls are unconnected. If we move forward to the elevation, the walls are unconnected. Okay. So, let's move to the one. We will select the walls. After selecting the walls, here we have seen that it is unconnected and the wall height is 4000, that is 4 meter. So, let's connect. We'll tap on that unconnect. We'll go to that arrow. We will connect to level 2. We will continue same with each wall. So, uh, this is a lengthy process. We have to select each wall and then uh, convert it to leather, level 2 and yes, it is lengthy. So, what's the shortcut? We'll go to wall. After going to wall, we'll see the unconnected tab over here. We'll connect it to level 2. Automatically, when I draw a bedroom over here and a kitchen over here, a hall over here, the wall will be automatically connected to the level 2 with a height 3.1 meter. Okay, with the access button, you can leave the command. Okay, so we have made a bedroom. We have made a kitchen. We have made a hall. And a waiting area. Okay, this is a 1 BHK. We just made it randomly. Uh, tomorrow I will show you how to make in detail in the next lecture. Okay, so there, there are many doors and windows, right? So for the entry, there are doors. The doors are not selected. First, we need to go to uh, the files and select the doors in the libraries. We'll go to generic, then US metric. Then we'll go to doors. We'll select a door. We'll select, first of all, we'll select a single door. Then we'll go to open. Okay, so 
the library in my laptop is of 2015 and the software is of 2019 so it is just converting the library after it will select we'll start to plan okay so the door has been selected you can see the detailing of the doors on the left side so if we if i want to open the door on um, outside then we'll go for this if i want to open the door for inside we'll go for this and usually it opens for inside we can also add a door like this okay so door has been added after entering from this area we'll move towards hall so we'll add a door to a hall or the hall will be opened uh, there are some errors in my plan uh, the walls the walls should be shifted something like here and the door might not be here but the entrance should be around here because um, if we enter from this side the outer person could see the kitchen area that is not as per the aspect prospect of the building we should uh, keep in mind that also so after taking entry from this we'll go to the hall area after moving towards the hall area we could shift the kitchen portion little bit behind and somewhat like here okay and now plan is a little bit smaller so please don't mind okay so after entering to the hall uh, we have to show the entrance to the room okay so we'll provide a door over here and uh, the kitchen does not have door usually mm, the plan is making a bit confusing so let's delete all the grid lines these are not useful for us anymore okay so we have deleted these grid lines this is the plan and uh, this is the kitchen the kitchen is a bit smaller so let's assume it it's an imaginary kitchen okay uh, so in the kitchen you have to select the wall usually the kitchen does not have those so it has wall opening will provide a wall opening over here the wall has been separated so this is a basic plan a 1dhk plan okay so hey we have not added the windows for ventilation okay again we have to go to the that generic part us metric then we'll select the windows where is the windows oh my god it doesn't have windows oh my god let's go to doors only does it have windows no oh my god I'm very sorry to say that uh, we don't have windows in our library so giving you an example with the door we select any window you have uh, will open that window and wherever you we want to insert that window will just go on that okay so let's do it okay because I have uh, passed okay so here we have uh, assume that we have selected a window it's the same process like door um, if you want to add a window over here you can just go and tap on the left the window will be added wherever you want to add the window you can just go and add it it's not a big deal uh, because i don't have window that's why i was not able to open that okay so the home with no windows okay so here we will end the tutorial if you like my channel please go and subscribe it hit the like buttons and truly share to your friends thank you so much guys